Welcome to the Connected Teamwork Podcast by Growth Leaders Network. How do we learn to truly thrive together? How do we stay connected to our authentic selves, each other, and our purpose as a team, especially when challenged? How do we unlock the deeper levels of group intelligence? Enjoy this episode of the Connected Teamwork Podcast and learn practical tools to evolve the connectedness of your team to its next level. Welcome to the eighth episode of the Connected Teamwork Podcast. And um, today's episode is about self-reflection and the value of self-reflection for leadership and for the teamwork. And uh, we will, before we start, we'll do a little bit, uh, a little connectedness <laughs> practice. We'll check in using the questions, uh, how are you feeling, how are you growing, and what's your intention for today? So uh, I'll start. I'll, um, I feel excited about today's episode. Um, I um, feel present. Uh, I'm growing. My growth is in um, letting go of things I cannot control. And, and in my current um, interesting and transformational situation, uh, being, you know, living in the U.S., coming here from Ukraine, uh, dealing with lots of various challenges, this is really a critical let's say, grounding skill to, to be able to let go of so many things I cannot control or cannot influence. Mm -hmm. um, and my intention is to really focus on this topic of how do we approach self-reflection, why it's important skill, and how to make it easy. It's not, you know, it's not that complicated and it's something you could be intentional about every day. With that, I'm in. Over to you, Carson. Elena, thank you. So great to be with you as always. And, uh, you know, today I'd say I'm feeling energized. Um, my wife likes to call this Monday Carson. She always wonders why I'm so energized on Monday right out of the gates. And then, of course, on weekends, I'm, you know, I, I like to decompress and I'm not this energetic. So you're getting the best of me, according to my wife. Um, how am I growing? You know, really, there's a lot of change. Change is the only constant. There's a lot of change in my world. And, um, you know, that the, the growth comes in learning how to lean into the change, how to pivot, how to survey the new playing field, as I like to say, um, understand the variables. And very similarly to what you outlined, Elena, you know, figuring out what, what can I control, what can't I, and focusing on what can be controlled and, and focusing on those inputs, how you can impact and influence meaningful uh, outcomes amidst a lot of change. Um, and then lastly, my intention for today is uh, really to dive into the value of self-reflection. Um, you know, I believe firmly, you know, when I started out as a leader and I, I've shared this on this show before, um, you know, was not given, a, you know, armed with a lot of the tools that I would need in order to be successful. I was uh, promoted very, very early and um, had to learn a lot of things by doing and sometimes by making mistakes and by failing. And, um, you know, sometimes I think early on leaders, you can have knee jerk reactions to things. You can act out of emotion. And while these things are normal and it's normal to have emotion and you want to acknowledge those emotions and understand them, uh, it's also important that you reflect um, on your decisions, the, the importance and the ramifications of your decisions, and you come from a position of strength. So really excited about unpacking that with you today. And so with that, I am also in and I'll pass it back to you. Welcome, Carson. Really happy to have you here. Um, well, let's um, maybe just spend a moment to reflect and talk about why why self reflection is really necessary. Um, you know, there there is a lot of action that has to happen, whether it's business or other types of organization when you're leading the team, right? So often, like there is no time to reflect. You just have to, you know, run, address the next issue, and so on. Uh, but why why do you find self-reflection important? And um, I can also share um, that for me personally, my whole growth, you know, the, let's say my whole inner growth mechanism, it's it's kind of impossible without self-reflection, right? So the the self-reflection gets triggered by various things. One of them, probably the most uh, immediate one, is feedback. You know, when you get when you get something that doesn't quite uh, make you feel as perfect about yourself as you maybe sometimes want to feel. 
and uh, so that feedback may trigger a reflection uh, um, a problem, a failure, a, a challenge, uh, which is not, you know, it's not being um, handled by you in a way you'd like to handle it or something. Um, so those types of uh, situations sort of trigger the process, right? But the overall uh, process for me brings a tremendous value of discovering something about myself, about the others, about the interaction that makes it more, either more enjoyable or more um, effective. Um, what about you, Carson? Yeah, that's a great way to kick us off. And I would say, you know, as a leader, often you're going to be tasked in making decisions. And very often those decisions are going to impact multiple other people. Um, it's going to impact their livelihoods. Um, it's going to interact how you work together. Um, could impact your, your customers and the other people that you serve and support. And that's why it's really important to understand all of the variables and all those ramifications. And rarely, if ever, is an immediate decision required. What I mean by that is rarely do you have a scenario where you have to make a decision right there in the moment. So that's why it's so important to really reflect, understand uh, what's what's true to you, what's true to your core principles. Um, how is this going to impact other people that are involved and engaged and getting feedback from them, not assuming uh, the impact that it may have or the ins insights that others may be able to share. But when I think about self-reflecting, there's a few core pillars um, that I was thinking about as we were preparing for this episode where self-reflection has really been impactful for me. Number one, leading through challenging times. You know, often and we've talked about this on this show before, you know, when you're leading through challenging times, it's so important to keep your a steady hand on the wheel as a leader, because um, there are a lot of people that are in fear of the change. Um, they make moves out of desperation or they maybe change their process or they certainty. And so it's really important that we're reflecting on what is true of us. What are we being asked to do, whether it's by our organization or by our teams and making sure that we're reflecting on these things. Lessons from failure. Um, Lord knows I've had a lot of failure in my career. Um, you know, I've lost jobs, uh, sometimes through no fault of my own. Um, you know, I've been moved around different roles. Um, I've lost uh, deals and significant relationships. And, and through all of those things, it's important that we, we sit in that to some degree and we think about what could I or should I have done differently in this case? Um, how could I have maybe nurtured this relationship better? How could, I have, uh, how could I see around corners the next time I face a similar situation better as a result of what I learned? I like to be a student. I'm a student of selling. I'm a student of leadership. I'm a student of life. And I really try to understand and unpack how I could do things better and differently. And it's starts with that growth mindset. That's a third pillar is cultivating the growth mindset culture or frankly, the abundance mindset. There's a lot of different things that you can do, but it starts with gratitude and really understanding what's at the core of what we want our team culture to be all about. And then lastly, you alluded to this, Elena, one that I think is super important is embracing feedback. Um, I have challenged past managers and mentors of mine to give me that constructive criticism, give me that constructive feedback. And it's hard. It's hard sometimes to get that feedback. Uh, my favorite manager that I've ever had, um, I would ask her specifically, you know, give me the feedback that's going to make me better. And she'd always tell me, you know, what, what got you here isn't going to get you to the next level. And she would sometimes give me that tough love, tough feedback. And it, it stings. It's painful sometimes to receive it. But if you're open to it, and you reflect and you understand how you can apply these learnings and be better coming out on the other side of it and going forward. That's how self-reflection can be very meaningful and powerful in your life. Thank you, Carson. And just um, to develop a little bit on the latter point, do you give an example of you know, a change you achieved or a behavior that, that you really looked at critically based on some feedback that you received? Yes, no doubt about it. Um, so for several years, I was an individual contributor. Um, you know, I had had leadership experience, um, but I was an individual contributor in the company that I work with today uh, for several years. And I'm very grateful for that because it gave me credibility when I made a move into a new role. However, uh, when you make a move into a leadership role, you're not the hero anymore. You're the hero maker. And so it isn't about you 
driving outcomes by yourself. It isn't about you winning awards. It's about how do I get everyone on my team to level up? How do I bring them on the journey? How do I understand what are their motivators and how they can be better? So what was great for me was, you know, I was promoted um, by my manager a few years back into a director role. And I had a team of direct reports, most of whom had done the role that I had done previously. So um, I had a way of doing things, um, as did they. And so it was really incumbent upon me, um, and this was the feedback that I was getting from my leader, uh, to make sure that I wasn't jumping in and trying to do for them. That I was understanding how I could observe how I could understand their strong suits and frankly, some of their areas of opportunity for improvement. And then how I could help them on the journey of improvement and leveling up, you know, seeing opportunities for them to get better, uh, giving them feedback as opposed to uh, taking over um, in situations where maybe they, they felt like they would need me to or where I'd have the inclination to do so. See, as a leader, the goal is to really help them understand um, how they can better themselves, how they can establish their, uh, their brand, create valuable relationships, invest in relationships, and develop and really build their, their team. And, uh, you know, that was something that I had been able to do successfully in a prior role, but I can't force my way of doing it on them. I need to observe their methods and their methodology and ultimately influence where it makes sense. And I have to earn the right um, in order to be trusted by these folks. I had to build a foundation of trust and transparency. So often for me, this came down to spending time observing and then making recommendations. But where my manager was infinitely helpful was helping me understand, too, that it wasn't about just jumping into the business. I think a lot of leaders, you know, we jump right into the desired outcomes. We, we jump right into the inputs. And this is a it's a comfortable muscle. It's a it's a reflex because a lot of times those are the calls that we get pulled into. Right. We get pulled into calls and it's all about, hey, this is the state of the business. This is the state of the numbers. This is what we need. We need you to do more of this, less of that. And so where she really grounded me was spend that time doing what we do here, do that check-in, get connected, understand what motivates people individually and personally, understand their family dynamic, understand what they're willing to share with you, know them on a personal level and share that from yourself as well. See, that wasn't what I was raised doing in my early 20s, mid 20s as a early on sales manager and director. It was very much get the number, sell the widget, dial, dial, dial. Flash forward till now, I think we've done a great job in many cases as a culture of embracing why we need to be uh, more in the trenches with our teams, more vulnerable, but also spending the time earning the right to uh, gain their trust through transparency and communication. That's where I've been helped in my career. Yeah, so that's a great example. And that sounds very familiar to me based on my own journey, you know, as a manager. So I discovered the value of human connection and the value of openness and sharing a bit later than the value of like focusing on the results, focusing on, you know, on the process to get those results and so on. And um, if we just look at uh, what's happening right here, right now in our lives, let's say over last month or two, right, you working, uh, I I would guess with more than one team, right? You're working with some, several teams. Um, you also part of this podcast, which is also, you know, you, me and Helga and um, Brandy, who is helping us, another small team and so on. Um, and through that teamwork experience, right? We're also growing, we're learning, and we, we do some of the self-reflections. So I'm curious, uh, how have you... Um, grown you know how you're growing now or have grown recently in the last few months through this teamwork i can um share you know my example i um i see like three main let's say activities for myself related to uh reflection and growing one is uh, direct observation i observe how my team members, uh, for example, how Hilke interacts with client. And I learned directly from just observing and seeing, you know, certain uh, way of engaging the client in into a dialogue and owning owning a solution that, that we develop together for a particular challenge that the client might have. Um, 
And so this is like a direct observation for which you have to put yourself in a, like you said before, in a learner position, right? You kind of have to accept I'm a learner here, I'm learning. Um, the second thing that we just discussed, feedback. And I myself had a, a great piece of feedback recently, which um, uh, was related to how I show up for the meetings, which reminded me that before any meeting, you know, it's so critical to take a moment or two to check in with yourself and see what kind of, you know, state you are in, uh, how energetic, how uh, positive you are, right, prior to clicking that join the meeting <laughs> button, right? And uh, uh, and that makes a huge difference. You show up in the right mood, in the, I don't know, light, fun, energetic way, and the meeting is, is flying, right? And you show up in a, in a bit of different level of intensity and heaviness, and the meeting is very different again, right? So the, these are the examples of, you know, small things w- you could do, which help you spend a minute or two self-reflecting tuning into yourself and kind of changing um the uh, reality right there right 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 there in that moment um so uh, maybe you have an example from like recent months or two of of growth like that i yeah i have a handful thank you for the opportunity elena and i love your examples um one i will tell you you know used to feedback would make me uncomfortable um, you know, constructive feedback would make me uncomfortable and I would get defensive with it. And, uh, you know, really working to embrace the opportunities for me to improve. If somebody offers you feedback or gives you feedback, they're doing so because they care about your growth. Um, they wouldn't bother or waste their time in giving feedback or constructive feedback to you if they didn't care about your growth. And so embracing feedback is a big area where I'm working continually to grow. Perception is reality, sometimes fair or unfair, right? Um, There's sometimes that there's a perception of you that's not fair, that's out there, but um, you'll find in your career and in your life that often perception is reality. It's it's important to understand uh, where people feel like from a different vantage point, uh, you could improve and be a better partner, be a better leader. Um, Furthermore, I I would say really just that continued embrace of change. Um, I will tell you, you know, it's important to check in with ourselves frequently and to acknowledge when we're just not feeling it sometimes. And that's a reality. Um, I think that become became more prominent uh, what with the pandemic. And then obviously over the last couple of years, there's been a lot of change and a lot of uncertainty in our world. And sometimes we're going to face these times where we're just not feeling it. And I was one of those people that I always, though I had a lot of people tell me because I would work a lot and I was a perfectionist and I was, um, you know, a success addict, as Arthur C. Brooks calls it in from strength to strength. Um, I had to acknowledge even I reached a point where um, I had uh, symptoms of burnout. And so getting better at acknowledging those things, checking in with myself and sometimes shrinking my bubble, um, you know, you don't have to take on the world every day. You just have to land the step in front of you. And the the farther and longer you navigate through your career and in your life, you know what you need to do. So the key element is just to do it. That's why I think self-reflection is so important because you eventually get to a point where you feel, I I love this analogy. I've made it in some of my books uh, where you feel like you're Neo in the matrix where um, you see these things before they happen. You have the ability to move so effectively that you can dodge bullets The reason that I think it's effective here is because often we know what we need to do. The challenging thing sometimes is conjuring ourselves back to our best every day. You don't have to be your best every day. Sometimes it's okay to acknowledge uh, that you're not your best and to give yourself grace, land the step in front of you, uh, communicate to others where you might need help. Uh, Those are all areas where I am growing and I'm a work in progress. Yeah, and this is really, really to me, it sounds really what connectedness is about, like con- being connected to self in this case, right? You're really connected to self when you frequently check in and recognize those things and being connected to others by being open about this with others. Okay, we're going to have a tiny break and then we'll continue. <laughs> you are listening to the Connected Teamwork podcast by Growth Leaders Network. Do you want to learn more about building the next level of connectedness in your team? Please contact 
Growth Leaders Network on LinkedIn. And now, back to the show. Um, well, we just talked about the value of checking in with yourself recently, right? Maybe making a pause, breathing, you know, figuring out what works for you, what's not, and, and readjusting. Also, um, being very open and seeking feedback from others, that, that, that's really helpful. Being observant, being in a learning and growth mode. Uh, what else? What else helps, uh, let's say, using self-reflection, self-awareness um, as, as a vehicle for growth? Particularly if you think, Carson, about the last, again, months or two, even us working on this podcast uh, together, what kind of um, you know, lessons or insights come to mind? Yeah, it's an important question. I think, you know, we're all on our own growth journey. Um I, I keep looking at some of the experiences and the mindsets that I had uh, when I was a younger leader versus how I feel now, uh, where I felt or almost was trained to think that I had to be the smartest person in the room or that it was weakness to ask for help or that um, getting feedback was a cause to get defensive. And, you know, now I, I get so grounded in and I delight in proactively seeking feedback and not taking it personally, right? Like, so... I'll give you an example. Um, I spent a lot of time uh, as a leader developing uh, betterment committees or spending time with my, uh, my folks that lead our, what we like to call our work health index or now our thrive index. And really what it's about is, is our team culture thriving? Are we proactively building out opportunities where we can improve morale, uh, make everyone feel included? Um, and, and seeking out perspectives. And part of this is as a leader, it's soliciting for feedback from the team. And you can't take it personally when someone's willing to share it, when they share something that um, is an area where they'd like to see the team improve or they'd like to see more. Um, sometimes it's a knee jerk reaction to think, well, my gosh, you know, why are they giving me this feedback? Um, is there something I'm doing wrong? Or, you know, do they not see that I'm doing this, this, and this? It isn't about that. You asked for feedback and the goal of the, getting that feedback was to have greater outcomes as a team and to build a uh, more connected team culture. So you've got to embrace feedback in whatever form it comes. Sometimes it's going to be unfiltered and raw. You're not asking for them to spare your feelings, nor should you. And it isn't about your emotion. It isn't about you. It's about the team and how you can take that feedback, take that perception, and you can funnel that into some of your reflection and some of the changes that you make. The other one I would throw out there, it's in a similar vein but it's about mentorship and coaching. I used to wear it as a badge of honor when I was a younger leader, that I was working 14, 15, 16 hours a day, that I wasn't sleeping and that I didn't read books that helped me in my career or that I didn't have any formal mentors. I used to wear this as some kind of badge of honor. Like I was so great because I had been successful because I had done a lot of these things on my own. But you know what? That limits your effectiveness as a person. Um, it limits your growth and fulfillment as a human being, but also as a leader. And going out and proactively building what a, a prior mentor of mine uh, called a uh, your own personal advisory board. Going out and finding proactively these mentors and coaches and also serving as a mentor and a coach for others. I've had so many mentors that have been really valuable in my life and in my career that have taught me how to better develop connected teams, to better see around corners um, in, because of their experiences that have helped me understand the importance of you know, earning the right to influence others, earning the importance of uh, investing in and creating network and uh, understanding people at a deeper level. And so um, I would say these are a couple of areas where I've really tried to double down um, in recent years is proactively soliciting for feedback because it makes everyone better and also proactively seeking opportunities to learn from mentors and coaches and to be a mentor and a coach. What about you, Elena? Yeah, that's that's wonderful. I would totally support that. Because I was um, very lucky in my professional, personal life having great mentors, meeting people who were either my direct bosses or close friends who became really good mentors in various areas of life. But my advice uh, to anyone would be also if you if you're not that lucky or for whatever reason, you know, your mentor moved to a different country or something, that relation broke, 
be very proactive in terms of seeking mentors that are at this stage at your in your career and in your work bring in that unique value and and you know that that goal that that you 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 may uh, learn from and benefit from so that's really really important and again being humble being humble and recognizing that um I personally also really enjoy uh, the practice of um, dedicating time and being intentional about reflecting on my, uh, I do it like every six months probably. So I set up uh, goals and, you know, important kind of elements of future for myself, my, vi my personal vision somewhere around January each year, you know, I find time to do that. I write that down. I make a little vision board or I draw things. Um, there are different techniques for that. But anyway, it's my, you know, my world, my vision. And then every six months, like I just did it recently uh, in the um, beginning of July, I look at uh, what happened, what I achieved, what I did, what, what went great, what what I learned from that, which things maybe came as pleasant surprises that I didn't plan for, but they happened, or which things I was afraid of six months ago, but now I'm afraid of doing something or trying something, but now it's happening and so on. So that whole process of just sitting down and spending usually takes a couple of hours uh, and usually I do it with someone else, again, was a mentor or was a peer um, who is, um, uh, goes through the similar process. Uh, that really uh, uh, gives critical insights in terms of how your, um, you know, planning and intuition and, and dreams, how it all uh, becomes real. And particularly when you do this regularly, and I do this for many, many years, now, maybe 15 years or something, and you can look back it's just so impressive uh, how much of um, magic you could bring to your own life by being intentional about what you want, what you stand for, uh, by being action-oriented, but also given time to just reflecting upon, upon what's happening. So uh, this is also a source of uh, personal strengths and wisdom for me, and, and I'm also using this with you know, mentoring and coaching others, helping others to to um, um, inten be intentional about how they build their life. And um, since we only have like a few minutes left, <laughs> let's just uh, maybe talk very briefly about how do you role model this for your sure. team members? How do you help your team members to, to also self-reflect? I love that, Elena. And I'm going to actually parlay that directly into some practical application. You know, what you just said around inventorying, um, you know, we're, we're mid-year now and uh, every year kind of gains its identity at some point. You know, at the beginning of every year, you kind of wonder like, what's this year? What am I going to achieve? Am I going to win? Am I going to lose? Am I going to um, have some really impactful things that transpire during the year? Uh, we just wrapped our fiscal year uh, and so I've spent a lot of time with the team looking back at what did we achieve? There were some folks that had some very challenging years, but uh, with every one of them, there was some uh, really impactful, uh, significant occurrences and momentum. And it's important to embrace that as we inventory ourselves. My recommendation is journaling. Um, I spent a lot of time journaling. Um, sometimes I have more times than others. You know, I'm a very busy person I, and I've got a, a family and three kids. So I don't always have the time to write some big, robust journal entry. And that's not what's important. Even if sometimes it may be a few bullet points, uh, things that are top of mind. Or, you know, while I'm on the treadmill in the morning making some notes uh, that I want to make sure I remember. But uh, journaling kind of where you are, what you're thinking about, uh, ideas that you're getting from what you're reading, self-reflections that are transpiring about things that, you know, are, are insights where you can do things better. Um, I often find that looking back, very similar to what you just outlined, Elena, looking back on where I've been and where I, especially realizing where you were six months ago and some of these achievements that you've had, this is really insightful, especially when you're going through a period of uncertainty or change and you're able to realize how far you've come. Um, I have an analogy I like to tell about going backpacking and, and hiking in the mountains back in 2018, totally out of my wheelhouse. I would look up and I'd realize, oh my gosh, I have to go up there. But if I focus on landing the step in front of me, 
I would eventually get to a point where I could look back and realize how far I've come. And that's the value of journaling and doing regular self-reflections. You can realize how far you've come and you can look at these majestic views, but also realize that you still have a long way to go, uh, which is part of that growth mindset. What about you, Elena? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally, totally resonate with, with you, Carson. And uh, I, I'm just going to mention something that I used to do with my team members uh, in in my um corporate work and uh, which I found very, very effective and successful is basically having a conversations, regular conversations about like what, you know, what do you aspire to achieve in the next six months? And we would always go outside of just work goals, right? It's just the integrated picture, you know, of the person's life. Like uh, I want to go on this trip, someone will say, or I, I want for my kids to see this and that. I want to do this and that. Okay, let's, so we would talk about work goals we talk about personal goals and we would do we would go through the similar process of inventory looking back in one on one where i could also share some some something that was happening with me but also help the other person to uh to look back and appreciate what what they were you know planning what they wanted to achieve what happened and so on and that always was a very um connected connectedness moment right because we would connect on a very deep level and I would also support them as as a coach and, and mentor. And I would learn something from, you know, from my team member in, in that conversation. And sometimes we'd get a challenging feedback uh, right there, even though I didn't ask for it. But that, that, that whole process, when it's, uh, you know, consistent year after year, it really, really, um, really, really helps to grow together. So with that, I think we, we need to finish here. So thank you so much, Carson. A great conversation. Really enjoyed it. And looking forward to our next episode. And thanks to everyone who was with us on Connected Teamwork podcast. Thank you for listening to the Connected Teamwork podcast by Growth Leaders Network. Take a moment to reflect on what you learned today that can help build your team. Also, if you like, think about one of your team members and what you appreciate about them. Let them know. Enjoy connecting more deeply to what is great about them. And see you next time at the Connected Teamwork Podcast.